used to be the Tunjong Paga United fan club chairman, lest we forget. You and I told you, didn't I? I was yeah. on the cruise ship last week and this granddad came up to me and went, Jaguars, all the way, because he remembered me <laughs> oh my from Queenstown Stadium. Welcome back to part two of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chiang Kong, and I'm back with us, Eddie. Hey, I guess. Like City must, Sailors fan. Yeah, you must know Eddie. You see him around all the Singapore games. Just remind our viewers and listeners what you do every week. Uh, I just attend Lion City Sailors players, <laughs> uh, Lion City Sailors games, and I interview people. Don't be modest. You've yeah. got the you got the, the podcast going, right? The Sailor I mean, Fan yeah, Talk. Sailor Fan Talk. So check it out. The website. I write articles, previews, post match thoughts, tactical analyses, and everything. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And it's thanks to people like Eddie and your good sh- self that we even have this part two because all of your comments, your interest, your support in local Singapore football keeps us going. And it's why we also have a sponsor in Starhub. Thank you, Starhub. Well, Starhub, well, you know, they, they, you sign up for the premium, premium plus packages, you get one year free broadband. But they are also going to hold some live events uh, happening, live screening of the Premier League matches sometime next month in October. So yeah. watch this space. <clears throat> we'll tell you more about it when it comes. Are we involved? Yes. Maybe. 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 There's a reason not to come. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we could be involved. You yeah. come down, bring the sailors down. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll watch we'll this see, we'll space. See. We'll update you very, very soon. As always, thank you for the comments. Loads. You want to get Loads stuck into the comments? Yeah. We, we start off with uh, Mr. Well, Cesano. Cesano. Are you Polish? Oh, never mind. So he said, um, any socio-political issue worth talking about is div- divisive. Yeah. Can we reasonably expect anyone who is not explicitly paid to do so to take a stand on such things? While it looks good to f- on footballers to push out a powerful message to a receptive audience, there is always a cost to bear by alienating the opposing audience and only the athletes themselves can decide whether this is a cost worth bearing. Very interesting point. For context, we were talking about Jordan Henderson yep, last week. Yep. We had So Ray Yong in the studio, national runner who since went out and won the uh, Pokari Sweat, yep. the 2.4K. Congratulations, Ray Yong. You, you go. I didn't. I was working. Uh, I was going to go, but he won the race. Congratulations. Mm. And we talked about how divisive it can be, Eddie, when athletes, sports people in the limelight speak up on certain issues. What do you think? Uh, yeah, of course. I, I totally agree with this guy's comment because I think there are issues where you start alienating huge chunks of people. But it's precisely because the greater the cost to them, the more authentic the message feels, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to take a very simple side. Like, for example, oh, I, I, I don't approve of war. I mean, obviously, I don't really know many people who approve of the war. But like LGBT issues. Yeah, so yeah. those those are the ones, you know, that, mm. you know, whenever Arsenal puts on a rainbow flag for to celebrate Pride Day, right, there's tons of people in the comments going, I'll stop supporting the club and everything. Then go. Yeah, so so <laughs> there, there is a cost and the bigger the cost there is, I think the more genuine it feels. Yeah. But I think athletes do have to use their platform for causes that they truly believe in. For example, Bellerin, I think. You're, you're right on that. Yeah. But I also feel that, you no. Know, you need consistency. Yeah. You know, that's why the Henderson case is just so much. <laughs> that's a the good point. The key is consistency. You can't say you you have your cake and eat it. You know, I support LGBT, but you know, if, if Saudi gives me like 10,000, 100,000 of, of uh, <laughs> uh, high wages, you know, you, you merely go, go and go to the car without even thinking about your previous allegiance. So, you know, that's 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 why Henderson's case is just so much, mm-hmm. I think. It could have been handled better. And and look, uh, Alan Shearer said the same thing. Gary Lineker said the same thing. If you'd have just come out, Jordan, and said, it's for the money, for my family, for my grandchildren, I don't think anyone would argue with it. They might disagree. But to try and paint yourself in a corner and you did the... No, especially when you'd been so consistent previously yeah. on yeah. LGBT yeah. issues and so on. No, no, no. You're absolutely right. I couldn't agree with yeah, you more the, on that it, one. The key is always about consistency. Yeah. You cannot say, have it both ways. Yeah, yeah. But it's hard. And mm. the, the, the concern I have, and I'd love to know what you think, Eddie, yeah. why it's so difficult to athletes, sports people to p- speak up on any issue these days is that people willfully misconstrue what yeah. you're saying and bend <clears throat> it and take it all out of context. The obvious example is, look, I'll tell you, just this week, I had someone on one of our feeds, we get so many comments, about So Ray Young, mm. saying, why do you have this guy yeah, on this show 
when he comments about the dominant race. That is willfully misinterpreting what So Ray Yong said. Yeah. We have said on this show many times, and I'll say it again, what he was saying was he was talking statistically about the majority race, the Chinese being 70% of the country, which is irrefutable. In, in terms of numbers, they are the dominant race. That's all he meant. But people were deliberately, and are still deliberately, taking his words out of context to suit whatever agenda they have. Yeah. And when that happens, it makes people like Ray Yong and others go, why bother? Yeah. Ray Yong will always speak up because he's Ray Yong. But other athletes may look at that and go, you know what? It's yeah. too risky. Why should I bother? And, and that's and it's the not a good sign. And it's not a good sign. You, as, as, as people, grown adults, we should be able to discuss yes. these matters in a very positive way. Exactly. Yeah. I think the Bellerin example I was getting to, so he cares a lot about green initiatives, yeah. he cares about um, spreading the cause of veganism, huh? and also he indulges in a lot of fashion, right? Mm. But people just stick these three things together and they go, he, he, he's gay. And it, it just <laughs> oh and they just use that as a stick to keep beating him with and it, and, and I'm sure there'll be That's other terrible. footballers who go, yeah. Oh yeah, you know, I better shut up because I don't wanna be called I don't be called this, I don't be called that. Yeah, that that's so, yeah. that's not the way. I think I think yeah. social media does no in the it, ironically in such a liberal medium it inhibits people from yeah. speaking nowadays and there are gay footballers in yeah. football there mm. we know yeah. that yeah. because statistically mm. they have to be yeah. but it's going to be harder and harder for that first person I know Gary Lineker has said he knows of gay footballers who have spoken to him according to him mm. privately yeah. and said should I or shouldn't I but that is a great example yeah. why would you because yeah. even guys like Bellerin who may or may not be gay yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. know but the point is even that hint he gets the abuse so yeah, it's, it's tough I mean Athletes should be able to speak up. Yes. Yeah. They should be consistent. Yeah. But they've got to feel like it's a safe space to do it, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. Anyway, let us know what you think. Send all of your comments to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. And exactly what we were talking about, but this is fine. Someone is disagreeing with what you and I said last Bye. week. That's fine. We welcome that. No problem. Disagree with us until the cows come home. Yeah. As long as it's like this, which is fair and respectful. Yeah. Tell us what he said. Okay. Go cut SG3550. Regular I mean, He's a regular contributor. Yeah. Instead of having a go at armchair critics for not putting their names in the head to vie for the top job, which is the FAS president. And this is uh, people talking about your comment, so right, this week they're having a go at you. Yes. <laughs> why not cast the spotlight on election contesting eligibility and the affiliate clubs that have the voting power? I feel the more pertinent question is, who makes up the silent major voting majority that is usually inclined to back the incumbent in the case of a contest? of election like that in 2017 <clears throat> and what is their reasons for doing so? Mm. That's a good point, I think. Yeah. Okay. This is in context of the FAS elections. Yeah, last where, week you said, why aren't more people standing up? Correct. Yeah. Right. What I, what I meant is that, you know, you got to start somewhere, even if you are an armchair critic, you, it's not very difficult to actually stand for election. You just need to be involved in organising football, Singapore football for two years, two out of the last yeah. five years. We checked this today. We checked this. So, you know, you can be a committee member from that. And then if you are a leader, then maybe you can run for president. That That is a way to, and to you know, contest for change. But, you know, I, but I think you are right. That question, the, the, the other question saying that, you no, know, why are there a silent majority who keep on complaining and complaining all, all among themselves? And then, you know, come, eventually comes up and, and says like, oh, we still support the incumbent president. It's just like out of convenience. Yeah. I don't know whether it's they are shirking responsibility to make to 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 make the change or you know sometimes sometimes they feel that uh well I can't do anything better and I just I just stay at the ground and complain that's mm. that's the that's the easy way out. Though. What do you think, Eddie? You literally put your money where your mouth is. You're yeah. out there every week. You go to every stadium. You're mm. doing your podcast. A lot of it is a labor of love. So you yeah. are actively involved at the grassroots level of the game. What is your thought on this? With regards to the FAS, should more people step up, put their names in the hat? I think there's a fear. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I don't doubt for a second that it's definitely not 100% of the football fraternity who are eligible, mm -hmm. who think that Bernard is the right man for the job. Okay. It's not 100%. Nope. It cannot be 100%. But I also think that it's a very close circle of uh, top men in the top positions. Mm -hmm. And I think you they, these people now feel like, okay, now I can silently do my job and help whatever club I'm helping. So let's say I'm a Tanjong Paga volunteer. I can help. 
in, in the committee and make decisions and all that. But if I step up, put my face out, put my name up to challenge, who knows what will happen? Mm. Will I be blacklisted? Will my club be blacklisted in future? Mm. I think there's a bit of that fear. Whether or not it's warranted, I can't comment. Yeah. But I'm speaking to some people, I think there's there's that fear. It's almost like Singapore general election. If you come out as an opposition, suddenly people will say, ah, well, you're opposition member, then you're not, not allowed to attend some things. There are mm. some things that other organizers say, ah, maybe not not you, you know? Yeah. And, but, but I think that... That is a fa- fall- it's, it's not <laughs> fallacy. It's not a fallacy, you know. It's a false thinking that elections are like that. Yeah. It's not like that. You, you, you can <laughs> jolly well come out and stand for election. You lose, you lose, you go back to your job. Mm. But at least you, you, there is a, there's an election process mm. to, to actually pick out the, 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 the right person. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree that some people have that, the, 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 fa- the false thinking, but, it's time to you know slowly change this thing. Otherwise, every time you'll be the incumbent winning, incumbent winning, and then you can't complain. And then you can't complain. If you're not yeah, going to try and make change. Complain. Yeah. Now I agree with you. Yeah. Right? I was laughing when you said about using the example of a Tanjong Paga volunteer. I yeah, thought you were talking about me because <laughs> <laughs> I used to be the Tanjong Paga United fan club chairman. Lest we forget, and I told you, didn't I? I was yeah. on the cruise ship last week, and this granddad came up to me and went, "Jaguars all the way," because he remembered me <laughs> oh my from Queenstown Stadium, nineteen. 19- 98, my You should friend. get back there, man. They need help. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Sorry for saying this on a podcast. I, 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 I quit when I... <laughs> but it's in the wrong East Stadium now. It's yeah, not, it's exactly. Not yeah, yeah. Speaking of an issue that will never go away, oh. it's been a while, but National Service is back. Oh. It, but I like this comment because yeah, I think I this just... comment will get a lot of responses. Tell our wonderful <laughs> listeners and viewers so, from Benny. Benny, Benny with Cam... Benny Whitcam 2741. He said, it is nonsense to use NS as an excuse. I served two years in the, the 1980s and was selected for a sports team. I performed six hours of duties and attended training every day and one match at the weekend. And some of my teammates were national players. I hardly saw them because they are away and training on overseas assignment. We just need to get back to that format. But first, we need to get Police S F Sports Association and SAFSA back in the Singapore <coughs> Premier League where enlisting players can train and play and continue their development. Okay, I'll let the Singaporeans go first. I, I, I mean, I, I think I, I like the sentiment and I think a lot of his comment, okay, I split this into two sections, right? Because mm. one of it, right, actually says that it is possible to continue playing um, while doing an NS. And I think there is a prominent Singaporean footballer called Daniel Goh, mm. who has actually said that you can do it, but it's very, very tough. And that's why you see- yeah, the standards of 1980s is yeah, yeah. somewhat- It's very tough. There you go. Yeah. So Daniel Goh, when he played for Young Lions during NS, mm. and the Daniel Goh now in Belaster Causa are two different players, yeah. yes. right? Daniel Goh, while playing for Young Lions, was being abused by Singapore fans from the stands. And now he's so I never so agree good. with it, but they, he was taking the ball. He was losing the ball all the time for a U23 game, and then he got booed by the fans. And I thought that was- shocking behavior yeah. so if you want those who are booing please reconsider um but the second part i think his suggestion is that police and sasa uh, get back so that they can train and play it actually i mean th- that's what the young lions is for you're correct so that's what the young lions is for they already do that they get released to play right they now. get released to play but it's a very erratic system having spoken to the footballers sometimes it depends very much on whether your ceo is willing to let you go. and It's if, always case by case. Correct. Yeah. And if he's willing to let you go, what time is he letting you go? Is it like the match is 7.30 at Jalan Besar, I let you go at 5. Or is it like, I'm a nice CEO, I'm letting you go at 1 p.m. Mm. But none of this is in rules. No. And you can think how the person who's let go at 1 p.m. will perform very different from the guy who's let go at 5 p.m. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just rush down. So yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's not I easy. think NS <clears throat> has now become a bit more flexible, a bit more understanding to sports athletes situations. Yeah. But the thing is, it's always on a case by case basis and always like different companies, different units have their own preferences, they have their own standing orders and, 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 and <coughs> you know, you never know yeah. how, mm. how much leeway you can get when you enter at mm. NS. You it's like a country's yeah. Yeah. defense comes first. Yeah. 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 I'll just say ben, Benny, fantastic comment. I wear my unmourness <laughs> on my sleeve here. So I salute you for doing all the training and the playing in the eighties. Mm. But all I'll add to that is, were you playing at an elite level? Yeah. Was you heading into the Bundesliga mm. like Daniel Town is? Yeah. Were you trying to do what Nathan Mao is trying to do at yeah. Lion City Sailors? Or Harry Burt Whistle. Harry Burt Whistle at Wolverhampton Wanderers and yeah. so on and so on. Mm-hmm. 
if you're just going to play for the Young Lions, you can do it. Yes, it's hard, as you mentioned, but it can be done. And if you want to talk about national service, look, that's a whole different podcast from a geopolitical team yeah. point of view. Yeah. We know so, why we need national service. Absolutely. Just read the newspapers, US, China, Russia. We need national service. That's a whole different debate. But for the purposes of football, can you balance everything that uh, Benny said and go play in the K-League? Or go play in the J-League? Yes. Or go play in Australia? Or go play in the on, US? On paper, it's not impossible. But it's going to be realistically, very, realistically, it's going to be so, it, so difficult. I would simplify it like this. If I'm an academy director working in Europe, yeah. right? i got two kids. They're both 18. One's Singaporean, one is European. Let's say for argument's sake, the Singaporean is slightly better than the European. I go with a Singaporean. First, I've got to get him a work permit, which isn't easy, no. all right? You've got to prove that he's better than other people in Europe. <laughs> Let's say for argument's sake, I do all the paperwork and I get him that permit. Even on the permit, I have to say he's going to go off and do NS. But let's say I get the permit. Then I'm going to lose him for two, two and a half years of physical, mental development at a key stage of his career. 99% of the academy directors will just say, you know what, screw it. I'll take the European. Yeah. He's not as good as a Singaporean, but he'll make my life a hell of a lot easier. That's the reality that we have to face. Which is what the this guy replied to the yep. previous email. Um, most execute, execute, no, three, three, two, five. The fact is that if Danielle Tan has to serve NS, you bet she wouldn't be able to let, sign a long-term contract with Dortmund. Uh, that, that two years of disruption will cost her. If I am Harry Bird Whistle, to choose between playing reserve squad of an established EPL team in Wolves versus coming back and serve NS for that precious two years, only idiots will choose the latter. If I come back to serve NS after the two years of no football, can I still go back to Wolves? Probably end up as, uh, in the la laughing sort of the young lions of this very, very harsh, very harsh. Very very harsh. harsh. <laughs> okay, once again, I'll defer to the Singaporeans first. <laughs> I mean, is it, yeah, go ahead. Do it. Yeah. I think the Harry Bird was so example. Of course, is the most uh, pressing one. Mm. I think he's clearly someone who can improve Singapore football by a lot. Mm. Yeah, just uh, for context, I got in touch today with my good friend who's a Wolves regular. He still hasn't made the first team yet, but he's yet. knocking on the door. Yeah. He's been playing at under 23 level. Uh, he is a Singapore citizen currently. We've all read the news. Mm. That may change at some point. But as it stands, he's a Singapore citizen playing in the Wolves squad. And yeah. I think I tap on to what Neil, Neil had said earlier, right? So it's... It is nigh on impossible, I think, yeah. for, for him to leave now and do his two years and everything. Yeah. So I think what LCS has tried to do is make them enlist earlier. So once they reach 16, they enlist. Yep. And hopefully because you're a younger age, I think SAF is also unlikely to give them very strenuous vocations. Mm. So they get Finish, yeah. they get more time after work and all that to, yeah. to go and do a bit the of The contention training. for that is you really have to prove that uh, early, that that guy is talented enough to serve uh, yeah. to go for early so, yeah. I guess that's the only compromise out of this this mm. situation. Mm. But for Harry Bird Whistle, I can't see him possibly choosing to come back. But, so, but this years. is the point, right? Yeah. National service will always be the fault line yeah. when it comes to our mm. athletes and particularly footballers' development. We can bury our heads in the sand or we can do this. We can have a mature conversation about it yeah. with fans, viewers, listeners, stakeholders, and see if we can make some sort of progress on this because we can't just keep going, nope, we have to somehow see at some point mm. if we can be a bit more malleable, yeah. if we do get a real <clears throat> talent coming through. Yeah, I agree. And I think MINDEF, Ministry of Defence, are willing to compromise a bit. I'm, I'm not I mean, obviously, you still have to serve NS, but they can sort of like develop some ways mm. where you can more, spend more of your time doing training and stuff. But the thing is that you don't be too loud about it, no? you Everything keep low key. You don't publicize, no, that, uh, that, oh yeah, my son is not like Harry Bird we still did. Oh, Maybe okay. you can get some form of leeway mm. with, with, with what, what, what Ministry of Defense wants if you engage them first and, and don't engage the media first. Mm. There might be some way you can go circum I, circumvent it, but mm. it's it's also a hit and miss affair. I'm not saying that that will definitely work. I think I mm. I think I really love to be a fly on the wall for the negotiations for Ben Davis mm -hmm. and and between Mindef and Ben Davis's parents because 
Mindef did say in one of their public statements that the reason that they didn't want to grant that deferment mm. was that the Davises refused to refused to agree on when was the return timeline. Mm. When was he supposed to return? Mm. Now, this could mean that, for example, they, they said like, oh, even when he's 35, he's not coming back. Or I, I don't want to commit to that. Or Mindef could have been much less reasonable and say he has to come back by 25 or something. So I don't know. Or maybe was there no certainty given and so the Davises decided it wasn't worth it. I would love to be a fly on the wall for that discussion yeah. because obviously Mindef is not going to publish a set of guidelines as to what what it needs to be before we can grant yeah. you that deferment. It's like all going to be a case-by-case case case. basis. It's always yeah. a case-by-by-case yeah. case So, uh, yeah. it'll no, be interesting to know. Yeah. And I would love to have any of the involved parties on this podcast. <laughs> but there's more chance of me playing for Singapore <laughs> than that happening. But as always, National Service, let us know your <clears throat> comments. Now, if you want to see someone on this panel get really wound <laughs> up, I'm just going to say, Lions, Tajikistan. Oh. Over to you. You were there. Yes, I was there. I watched the match. Oh. What what can I say? There's the gun clubs um, catch touch, catch phrase. What can I say? Okay, um, I mean, I had I had a bad experience, but I, I, bad personal experience there. But I'm not gonna say 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 that thing. But on the pitch, I think the Lions were a mess. I think, um, I no you know the the first half was like the the the, the defenders were passing passing all around them. Passing left, passing right, passing back, and you know they they, they look like confused. And what where is the next pass going to be? Because unlike tr- proper, unlike usual training, the Tajikistan will be trying to disrupt all your passes. Mm. The Tajikistan play, players will definitely try to dis- disrupt, and you know you have to try to read the situation and make the right pass forward. Mm. And you know they they couldn't. I mean for for the first half, if much for the second half, they were like passing around like where where should I pass next and then. There were arguments between teammates. You, know, you should be running there. You should be going really? here. And then it's until the fans themselves, they were like trying to teach the players, pass to him, la, pass to Ryan Stewart. La. You know, it was, I mean, they, they barely had a shot on goal. They got, I think, one shot on goal. The whole match, they got Adam Swandi who was sent off for silly retaliation and they lost 2-0. And, you know, much, much as... I don't like to criticize the, the 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 team and the coaches, but you know it's been almost more than a year that Nishigaya, Nishigaya. has been the head coach, and there is no signs of progress. Yeah, yeah, it's either stagnant or if I if people are going to be harsh, it's a re- it's already a great regression from the Indonesia match at, at the, the last AFF Cup. So, I mean, it is I mean everybody is worried like worried and concerned that you know they. Next next month we have the World Cup qualifying match against Guam, yeah. and we might not even win that that yeah. two legged tie. The two hundred and third ranked. So, yeah. and I mean that was an interesting one where actually there was a video of the Guam players' reaction when they realized that they drawn Singapore. Yeah. They were celebrating. I, I don't know why they were celebrating, <laughs> but, but uh, it's not a good look, I guess. And I really hope yeah. that you know if I was a Singapore coach, I'd be showing my boys the video. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. look, they're celebrating and getting you guys. Well, listening to you just then and also when we were talking before, mm. you've made me change my mind, actually, Han Kyong, because originally I was big picture, make the sacrifices, follow the Japanese model, be patient, da, da, da. I still believe that. that- but I'm now coming around to the view that we can't be so idealistic on the ground. We need to fix the squad we've got now. I actually now think we need a Raddy Avramovich type figure, a lower league no frills, experience with lesser teams to go in and say, this is my core of 20 players. This is what I need to do right now on the training ground to get the best of this squad. Meanwhile, you guys, the technical directors, you can work on your team, Japanese models and 10-year plans and five-year plans right here, right now. With the young players. With the young players. Mm. I need a no frills, no nonsense, lower league, Wrexham kind (laughs) of, you know, just... Do what I can with the players I've got available and leave all the team stuff to others because otherwise I don't see this improving anytime soon. Yeah. I'm sure Nish- Nishigaya has a very nice philosophy of trying yeah, to I'm play sure. beautiful football. But whether the players themselves can you know, have the enough skills and enough you know, tactical awareness to play that kind of beautiful football which is never easy. You, you think it's easy, it's not easy. Yeah, And you know, 
That that that's the question. I mean, Nishigaya was was on the pitch. You can't say this directing here, directing yeah. there. But you know, the the players just couldn't see that pass, and you know, then then you are in trouble already. Uh. Yeah. That's that's the that's the standard of our. If that's the standard of our players. Why don't play a like a defensive and de- defensive formation and do counter attack? If you have quick players like Shawal now, Shawal or Shara Anna and you know or, or who, whoever else who's who's quick yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, just let us know what you mm. think. Let's finish on positive news. His mob. There you go in the house. Lion City representing Singapore in the Asian football. Tell us what's happening. Oh, it's really exciting, man. I think the Champions League is coming up. So 20th of September, we play our first home game All at Jalan right. Besar Stadium. Next week, man. This is Bangkok United. Then I think the next game, we travel to Hong Kong. I'm mm-hmm. going. And oh, then, wow. yeah, I'm going to Hong Kong to watch the game. Bring my, par- my parents there. <laughs> my poor parents. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Uh, they've been forced to support as well. Nice, but um, nice, nice. then, you know, after that, we play Jumbo. So it's a back-to-back um, Korean powerhouse oh, Jumbo. Home and away. Yeah. Home and away. Then after that, uh, Kichi and of course Bangkok United again. Mm. So, What's your expectations? I think, you know, the first thing I'll say is that we were happy not to draw more of the traditional powerhouses. Mm. So Jumbo mm. is one, but we could have also drawn Urawa Red Diamonds yes. as well. Yeah. And then that would have been, I mean, Terrible, yeah. I, would have, I, I mean, realistically, that's game over. Right? Yeah. Because in the, in the Asian Champions League, even second spot doesn't guarantee you a route out of the, you have to be one, like top one, the top yeah. three best yeah. um, second uh, runner-ups in, yeah. in the mm. group. So, yeah. So I think with this group, I think we have a shot, but a lot of it, I think, hinges on the first game. If you come out of your home game against Bangkok United with nothing, then, you know, I think it, it's an uphill battle. But I think your squad, you know, you've signed pretty re- new yeah. foreign signings just just you know, just for this uh, AFC Champions League assault, and uh, I think you've done a great job. I think the 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 team played well at the end till end of the the SPA, the Singapore Premier League. They've been winning matches in a row. Bailey Wright, uh, super. Super is back. Super yeah, is back. Yeah. Uh, and Rui Perret. Rui Perret. and Pires. Zivkovic. Zivkovic is a real handful yeah. up front. So, I think. Last season in the Champions League where we got seven points out of uh, six games. That was a great run. That was a great one, but yeah. we had Kim Shin Wook, who, I mean, I love the guy, but he's not the most mobile. Yeah. So now Zivkovic is very mobile. And I think when I spoke to him also, he spoke about the, the threat on the counter. Mm. He said, we're going to be playing some big teams. So there, there needs to be a threat on the counter. And then we have Shawa with Zivkovic, yeah. who are very mobile. And you still have cool. Lestian and Lopez. Man. Lestian, Lopez, yeah. giving the ammunition. So I think obviously it's... Um, and I mean, Lestian last season was like, Less than version one, I call him less than version <laughs> this two this year because it's something ridiculous. Year, like it's like twenty eight goals and twenty five assists mm. in like thirty wow. games or something like that. Yeah, that, that's just nonsense statistics, yeah. man. Like it's 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 play a lot to season, look forward to. It's, from, yeah. it's my play of the season. Oh, down. definitely. If he uh, doesn't, yeah, if I, he doesn't get it, I'll burn FAS down. <laughs> 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 just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. I do. I said this many times on the show. You need trailblazers. Yeah. We've got Daniel Tam in Bundesliga. That's a trailblazer. We've got Nathan Mao breaking individual youth records. That's a trailblazer. We didn't have a team kind a trailblazer it's on you my friend it's on you yeah, to generate that kind of local spark and interest yeah. I think you will give us a prediction I think we I think we'll finish second in the group but whether that's enough to be one of the best runner ups I don't know but I think if we do finish second I think we should be very very proud I think we have a. I think sailors have a chance yeah, I'm going to say second. Yeah. I'm going to say second. Let's fly the flag for the Lion City Sailors, <laughs> Singapore in the Asian Champions League. What do you think? How do you think the Lion City Sailors will do? Send all your predictions to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. And don't forget, you'll see us in the flesh, hopefully, very soon because of the Star Hub event. Yeah, the, the next month they might be holding a live screening event. So, all. Please watch this space. We will tell you all about it when it comes. And that's only really because of you guys, week after week, comment after comment. Seriously, we do thank you. We're a season and a half into this. We're nothing without you guys. So thanks again. Do keep all of your comments coming every week. And we'll see you same place, same time next week. Thanks, Eddie. Hey, thanks for the invite, man. Yep. Thanks very much. See you soon. soon. Go Line City Sailors. Flying the flag for Singapore.